mindset is such an important thing when you're trying to grow a business or even invest and, and try to create wealth. And one of the things that I want to talk about today is producers versus consumers. I'm going to give you a definition of each. And then I want you just to ask yourself, which one am I? And if I'm not the one that's going to produce wealth, then maybe I need to make some changes. So this really resonated with me, especially since I came from parents who went through the depression. And a lot of my thinking was to be more of a consumer, more of a saver, more of a order, just in case, things like that. And it's really been hard to break some of those old mindsets. So the reason I have my mindset series is hopefully somebody out there can benefit from it as well, because we are usually the product of the way we were raised. And it takes some time to change yourself and to become that person, that better person that you want to be. My youngest daughter is 29. And she always tells me I'm not that person anymore. And she's always trying to better herself. And she's really inspired me as well to think, you know, it's okay to let go of your old way of thinking or old thoughts that aren't as productive as they could be. So don't be afraid of let go of things that you believe to be true. And always aim to be better, be better each day. So today, we're going to talk about consumer versus producer. The first thing I want to talk about is a consumer. And I'm going to just take it out of uh, a book that I have been reading called Killing Sacred Cows. And I've got the link below if you want to read the whole book. But he talks about different myths about money. And one of like I said, this one really resonated with me. And Let's define the two first, and then we'll um, dig in for each one. In the most basic terms, producers are those who produce more value than they consume. Consumers are the opposite, those who consume more value than they produce. But this simple distinction has massive effects on our lives, our societies, and our worlds. So let's talk about consumers. Because consumers focus on what they get instead of what they can give, they avoid responsibility. They depend on others for their happiness. They rarely create real value. Consumers operate in scarcity. So they view the world through eyes that see poverty and limitations. They think there isn't enough to go around, so they should get what they can before it all runs out. They take and leave nothing in place of what they take. They often feel victimized by other people and external circumstances. When they don't get what they want, or what they think they should, they believe that material things, not people, have intrinsic value because they feel entitled to everything that is given to them. They are poor stewards and allow their human life value to degenerate. Security to consumers is based on things outside of themselves and their choices. It is anything and everything they can think of. The government, their bosses, their company, their parents or grandparents, their 401ks. When things go wrong, nothing is ever their fault. They place blame and avoid responsibility. Security to them in the, is the expectation that someone else will always take care of them and make things right somehow. They believe in luck and misfortune, not choice and accountability. Consumers are either fearful to the point of enslaving themselves or foolhardy in their love of freedom to the point of exposing themselves to much unnecessary risk. Either way, they depend on others because they don't know how to take care of themselves, nor do they want the responsibility of doing so. Unfortunately, this desperate grasping for security ends in misery. Consumers never become what they could have become because they never take the sometimes excruciating yet empowering step of taking responsibility for themselves. Their potential lies dormant in a pool of self-deception. Now, you may have seen yourself in some of that. Um, I actually was a consumer. Um, there was a lot of things that had truth there, but I will not... I, I wouldn't say that I would think that there's a scale of zero to 10. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not all of that. But there are some features in there that you might have. Um, a lot of mine was um, not taking that responsibility for finances. I just went and got a job and I never in a million years when I was younger did I even think of quitting my job. I was raised that you went and got a job, you stayed with it for 30 years, and you just did it. And that is definitely um, more of a consumer. I was um, allowing that company to take responsibility for my needs, if that makes sense. So when you get outside of that box and start thinking like a producer, things can change. So let's go ahead and read the def definition of a producer. In contrast, 
Producers are the responsible, innovative, and creative people who create all of the products and services that we buy and use. They are more concerned with giving than with receiving. They practice enlightened self-interest. The belief, the way to bring others the most happiness is to serve others. They don't think of themselves. They think of others. They are happy, wealthy, and successful, or they are on their way to becoming that. Producers lift, bless, serve, and contribute to everything good in the world. Producers always leave things better than they found them, even if they weren't responsible for the destruction that they fix. Producers know that people, not material things, have intrinsic value. They love people and use material things to serve others. They operate in abundance and they view the world through eyes that see limitless possibilities for value creation. They are wise stewards over everything that they have been blessed with. Many people have vague feelings that this must be the best way to live, but shake it off as misguided idealism, afraid of someone taking advantage of them. But becoming a producer means creating value, and creating value means receiving value abundantly and without fear for security. Producers are committed to creating maximum value in all situations, regardless of circumstances. So a producer is going to even think beyond today, and they even look at leaving a legacy for their heirs beyond them. So the, their whole thought in life is um, different than a consumer. A consumer is always looking for what is it that I can get? What can I buy? What can I, what can I go out there and get to, that's going to fulfill me and make my life better? And if you think about it, how many times have we seen rich people or heard of them that they have, they were, they maybe inherited money from you know, their parents who were very wealthy. And yet the, you'll hear stories of how they're on drugs or um, they have no purpose in life. And in this book, um, Garrett Gunderson talks a lot about soul purpose. And we also, in a lot of our training on having a YouTube video or a business, you've always been taught to do something that you have a passion for. Not Don't go into business just looking to make money for the sake of making it, but have a purpose. And he talks a lot of that about that in the book. I highly recommend that you get it. I would love to read the whole thing to you, but um, that would take a while. Have a blessed day. I hope that this resonated with you and that you can make some changes and start becoming that producer.